What, John, do you think are some of the, the common misunderstandings or, or perhaps like obstacles yeah. that, that you have witnessed uh, among American Christians yeah. or the American yeah. church when it comes to pursuing racial reconciliation? Yeah. Even the way the conversation is framed and the agenda that's baked into the title, racial reconciliation, right? Mm-hmm. Oftentimes I see that term championed to thrown out in a majority context or culture and the people that advocate for the need of it um, are those that often find it missing in their own lives. So I say it like this, right? Um, being black in America, the way that I've grown up, my dinner table, my relationships have always been diverse, right? I've gone to predominantly white schools from kindergarten to doctoral work. So it's like, so So on one hand, when we talk about reconciliation, right, what I often find from minorities is, wait a minute, my life is diverse. I have reconciled relationships. It's often what we found, uh, the majority culture context that lacks it and wants to make reconciliation a priority where what we're saying is, no, 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 no. I do think that we need to talk about that, but I do think the reconciliation or the unity in a sense is a byproduct of something that we're after, right? Unity in and of itself, um, in some ways, right? So we're not always, it's going to break down. But in some ways, unity in and of itself is not a vice or a virtue. It's a vehicle, right? So it's like this, like uh, the Nazis were unified. Genesis is going to go to great length to say the people that built the Tower of Babel were unified. The Los Angeles Lakers and the Patriots are unified and nobody likes them, right? (laughs) We all look and say, oh, no, no, they're unified towards a goal that really don't help me, right? So what I want more than unity is solidarity or justice. And I think like unity can serve great ends. Unity can serve nefarious ends. So we don't need to place that as the North Star. I think in the racial conversation, we do need to shift the conversation just from reconciliation to solidarity, justice to works like that. And I think that's what you see in Acts 6, right? Mm-hmm. You don't get unity by talking about unity, right? So Acts 6 and Acts 15, two places where the unity of the church is threatened. And in Acts 6, Hellenistic widows get overlooked and they're upset and they come to Peter. And Peter doesn't just say, we're we're all one in Christ. Bear with us as we work through this thing. No, they sit back and they pray and they said, there is an issue. It's not one of overt racism, but it is one of simple neglect and a minority group being overlooked. And what they say is, Church, let's everybody work together. Let's do what we can to fix the problem. And they fixed the problem. And do you know what they got at the end of that? Unity, right? Right, right, right. Unity comes from addressing the things that stand in our way. It feels like there's this brick wall of injustice that has been built up. And even largely, uh, some of the major denominations and proponents in the church have a history of their ancestors, not just building this brick wall, but being the architects and the designer of Mm -hmm. the brick walls. And what we're saying is, I wanna hug it out just as much as anybody else, but I'm on one side of the brick wall, y'all are on this one, how about we work together, let's tear down this brick wall because of the, you know, unity that we already have in Christ, right? There's an ontological unity that we have in Christ. Let's make that practical in our solidarity to tear down this brick wall. And then once that brick wall is teared down, then we can hug it out as an expression of, oh, look, now we can actually 
enjoy the unity that has been provided to, to us by Christ. 